Hello, I'm Glenda Shawley from Fabulous Networking and in this short video I wanted to share a mini education slot that we did at our BizChat meeting earlier today. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen and what I'm wanting to talk to you about is making the most of your marketing resources. Yeah, times are hard. Um, we're not technically in a recession, but uh, many people have cut back on spending. And what that often means businesses do is that they cut back on their marketing budgets. I believe that that is a big mistake uh, and the evidence tends to suggest, suggest that. It's those businesses that continue to spend on marketing that uh, emerge stronger when the economy picks up again. So what I would encourage you to do is to think about what you're spending your money on. And that might be on your website, on mailing software, on managing your customers um, and the relationships you have with them, on boosting social media or on upgrading the access that you have within your social media challenge channels, on advertising, on PR, on content production and one of the things that uh, some of the attendees said today was that they spend money on graphic design because they're not capable of or don't consider themselves capable of um, doing their own design uh, well enough um, and it may be that you're spending money on a graphic designer or it may be that you're spending money on a package like Canva for instance. Uh, then we've got uh, networking, got ex exhibitions and events and SEO. There may be other things that you have on your marketing budget, but the principles that I wanted to talk about apply here. So what I really want you to think about is, are your investments working hard enough? Because I think very often we spend that money and when, when money is not in such tight supply, um, we tend to buy things we think might be nice to have. We don't necessarily make use of all their functionality and what they can do for us. And when you know, money isn't an issue, that doesn't really matter. But when we are thinking about tight budgets, it's more of a concern and we should be making more of what we're spending the money on. So here I'm going to give you three ideas to think about. Obviously, all of those areas that I highlighted earlier could be things you want to think about. First of all, I think um, it's worth looking at your website and SEO. Are you addressing the current issues facing your potential customers? And are you using the terms that they're using in 2023? You know, people have changed their buying habits. Um, they are being more considered perhaps in their purchases. They may be buying more along what they need rather than what they want. Um, and they may be buying essentials. Um, it's really important that we match the tone in our websites uh, to what people are experiencing at the moment, what they're feeling. So, you know, maybe we need to be a little bit more understanding and empathetic with the challenges that people have. So it might be worth having a look at the wording on your website, having a look at maybe the imagery on your website and say, is it in tune with the business world in 2023? Um, and the same with SEO. When did you last revisit the terms that you're using uh, for search engine op optimization? It may be that what people are searching for in 2023 is not what they were searching for in 2022, uh, and certainly probably isn't what they were searching for in 2019. And then there'll have been the bit in between uh, for the pandemic, and maybe you changed the website then and haven't changed it again since. So always worth updating the website, having a look. Is it really speaking to today's audience? And then thinking about your content and is it working hard enough and is it purposeful enough? So what are you producing? What's the purpose of what you're producing? Really everything that we do or nearly everything we do should have a purpose. Um, 
that purpose might be sharing a little bit of insight into who you are and your personality, etc. Um, or it may be to drive traffic to your website, to bring people to an event, to share your knowledge so that you build uh, a rapport with people and, and an understanding with people. But you should have a purpose for all of your content. And where is it leading? What action do you want to take people to next? So what, what's your call to action? Where do they go from where you've got them? And you know, do you have a few further steps planned? So you know, if you're doing, a, like I am, a video here, what I would really like you to be doing is coming along to a fabulous networking event uh, and joining in the discussion. So you might start with the biz chat, which is where this originated, and then potentially um, you may come along to other meetings or well, you may prefer to read an article on the website and find out a little bit more about us that way. But how can you maximize your time and investment? Um, so thinking about repurposing what you put effort in. So yesterday I wrote an article uh, which I have published as a blog. It's called, Are You Making a Big Mistake? Um, it's in our news section on the website currently. I then used it as a mini article in our newsletter yesterday. I'm about to turn it into a video and I have lots of other ideas for reels, for Instagram stories, for Instagram posts, for short posts on LinkedIn. In total, I have got 31 ideas for how I can use that one article for more content uh, on my different platforms. And I came up with those 31 uh, ideas in about five minutes. Now, obviously, it'll take me a bit longer than five minutes to produce that content. But there is an awful lot of content out of one investment of time in producing that content. And the third idea I'd like you to think about is your networking. Now, I believe that networking is important, but I would say that as an MD of a networking community, wouldn't I? I think it's important because what we, who we know, it has always been vitally important to growing our connections. Uh, and networking is a great way of meeting people that we might not ordinarily run to uh, in the normal course of life. Um, you know, we may meet people at the school gate, we may meet people in the pub, but they may not be uh, business owners or potential collaborators or users of our services, for instance. So going along to business networking events is a great way of meeting people with whom you can uh, perhaps jointly promote your businesses, but with whom you can work in a no number of different ways. So if you are a member of a networking community, the first thing I want you to think about is, are you making full use of everything your membership offers you? Uh, I would say that 90%, and I haven't actually done the maths, but 90% of the members of our community are not. Now, you know, that's their choice. Um, they're perfectly free to make that choice. But before you stop your membership of an organisation, do think, am I making the most of it? Is there something here that could be really valuable to me that I'm not currently using? So, for instance, are you putting yourself forward for opportunities to speak at meetings, to have uh, to, to share insights into what you do, uh, which is an opportunity that some networking communities have? Are you putting yourself forward for learning uh, leadership, for instance? So we run these mini education slots at every biz chat meeting, which happens every Monday except bank holidays. Uh, and there's an opportunity for people to lead those. So a very short five minute session, typically. Um, or we run a working lunch, which is an hour and a half each month. And we would welcome members running those or maybe a mini workshop at a meeting. There are all sorts of opportunities that we'd love people to step into. Uh, and then you'd hear less of my voice, which can be no bad thing. Are you following up for the networking that you're doing? Um, I'm notoriously bad at this. Uh, it's something I have to remind myself all the time. And I know some of our members are absolutely brilliant at it. 
But if you don't follow up the connections, and I don't mean just new connections, but sometimes connections you've had in a while, who you may not have actually had individual conversations with for a while, um, then you could be losing out on a potential for business, whether that be referrals or business from the person directly, or whether it's the potential perhaps to do a collaborative venture. So follow up is where the gold is. And then are you supporting others in the community? We have got some really lovely members and many of them are very good at supporting each other on social media. So they comment, they share, um, they add value to what people are saying. We've also got quite a lot of members who don't really do very much between meetings. And I would love to hear from them. I would love them to be using the opportunity to support their fellow members. But whilst they're doing that, they're making themselves visible. So they're showcasing if you put a comment on LinkedIn on somebody else's post for instance you know, your comment shows up with a brief description about what you do so you're promoting yourself as well so you know make use of those things as well and then I would ask you to check is your message clear and up to date does it need refreshing you know Many networking organisations do the one minute pitch. We don't do that as a routine part of our meetings anymore because they've become a bit stale and a bit samey. Um, and we'd like to make our introductions now more interactive. But that doesn't mean to say that if we've got a large number of visitors at a meeting, that we might not revert to the one minute pitch because it's the most efficient way, perhaps of getting everybody to find out about who else is there. In, when you refresh it and make it current, you're invigorating it. It's got new life. It's got new energy. And maybe somebody will hear a message because you've repackaged it. Whereas perhaps if you've been delivering that same message for a time immemorial, they've switched off to it. You know, they might be doing you the courtesy of looking at you, but their brain is somewhere else. They're planning what they're having for dinner um, or they're thinking how to, they're going to do with that business challenge. So it might well be worth reinvigorating what you're doing. So that's my message in today's video. Just have a look at what you're spending your marketing budget on and make sure that you are maximizing the bang for your bucks as it were, on those things. Um, and, and really, before you stop spending money, really think about how you could make more of the investments that you're making so that the money comes in to pay for that investment more. And then when times are less challenging than they are currently, you will be really well positioned to make the most of that. You'll still be front of people's minds. Thanks for watching.